My name is Tammy Lee Meyer, and today I'm joined by Sam Han. Uh, Sam and I are going to explore his idea of collaborology in a generative live uh, collaboration to be able to explore, have Sam express what it is that he's dreaming into and to explore the potentialities of what it can do and where it might go. So Sam, I would invite you to share what you mean by collaborology. Tammy, thank you. So a brief introduction. I've worked on a lot of different technical projects, having been in Silicon Valley and having worked primarily in software systems of some complexity. And that background led me to building some systems that resembled hypertext way back in the early 90s. And that led to my encounter with uh, Dr. Douglas Engelbart, who by most accounts is credited with inventing hypertext and uh, the, the web-like nature of connected content. And he's also credited with many other technical inventions, you know, including the mouse, word processing, outline processing, uh, multimedia, window processing, uh, version control. And what struck me about understanding Doug. It's all going on. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> is that he viewed himself not primarily as a technologist. He wanted to do this and put tools in the hands of people so that we can grow our collective capability to address problems that are quite complex and at a scale which no individual or no organization, no regional government, no national government, no continent could even have a hope of resolving on their own. And what Doug realized through all of his work was that the best way we build technology and the best way we build our capability is for us to put tools in our hands that allow us to do things differently, that allow us to think about our practices, our protocols, our beliefs, our values, our procedures, our legal structure differently. And by evolving them, then we can then guide the further iteration of technology, which then gives us new capability for us to build on the human system side. So he saw this parallel, but very integrated, very interactive co-development between technology systems and human systems. Now, if you look at even Doug's team, his team lasted about a decade, but it did not last longer than that. And even Doug himself realizes that there was more to be learned from the human system side than he and his team were able to elicit from their own practices. And I see this in many different engagements I've had throughout the Valley and through all the various different companies that I've worked at. And that is that we think we're technologists, but sometimes we don't pay enough attention and give enough priority to how we're utilizing our technologies, you know, how we're thinking about the way we as humans can connect, the way we can solve problems together, the way we can actually frame problems, the way we can actually exchange memories with each other, the way we can actually, you know, come and solve problems together with different processes. So when I mentioned these ideas to Doug, and by the way, I think I, I framed this in an email to him in July of 2005. Sorry about this, Tammy. Someone's actually trying to reach me, but I'll reach back to them later. Why don't we pause so that you can, uh, you can deal with that and come right back. Okay. And we're back. <laughs> uh, so I'll just reflect a little bit of what I've heard so far, Sam, just to uh, see if I've caught what you've been throwing down. That'd be great. Uh, so one of your big inspirations is Doug Engelbert, 
who was one of the pioneers of the internet and you've been in communication with him. And some of what you're really inspired by is the potentiality of what the internet provides in terms of collaboration, connection, and developing systems that can uh, allow us to, um, to be able to meet the challenges that we face. Yes, thanks. That's a good, uh, that's a good recap. And I was just riffing on a related theme, which was that as we see the coevolution model, between how we develop tools and how we develop our own practices and our own human systems and values and, and procedures, that so much emphasis, especially in Silicon Valley, goes into technology development and product development and just, you know, writing Moore's Law every 18 months. What's but Moore's Law? Moore's Law is that, you know, the same technical capability usually is doubled within 18 months at the same price or is halved in cost at the same capability, you know? So every 18 months we get this exp exponential curve where capability, at least technically, seems to double every 18 months. But if we look at our human system side of things, I take a look at, you know, boards of uh, directors and I take a look at meetings and I take a look at uh, the way other people engage themselves. And for some reason, there's this 140 or 150 year old document called Robert's Rules of Order that still seems to be the state of the art with a few minor tweets here and there, of how we conduct ourselves as groups, as teams. So it's not nearly as, let's say, well-developed, you know, how we interact with each other and how we engage with each other and how we be with each other and how we help each other achieve. You know, that side of things has not nearly been as developed as the technical side of things. So my reflection then goes towards what, if we really treated the human side of scaling our collective capability very explicitly, you know, very consciously, very objectively, to try and see how we can learn to either be or feel or interact in a more effective way so that we can think about scaling ourselves as people and not just watching our technology scale. So that's really one of my my root ideas for being interested in this, uh, this thing called collaborology, which I'll get around to defining now. You know, to me, collaborology has a number of key elements. One is, in order to really solve these really, really planetary scale problems, since there is no single entity that's really going to tell us what to do and resolve it and plan it and strategize it and you know, break down all the tasks and give us each something to do about it, we have to figure out how to align as many autonomous entities, as autonomous individuals, organizations, countries, continents, you know, NGOs, and really figure out how do we do this so that I'm not doing it because you're paying me or you're not doing it because I'm telling you what to do, but we're all doing it from this unified sense that there's something that we could be doing together that could move the planet further towards sustainability and uh, resilience. So that's idea number one, is how do we scale it where not a single entity is in charge? The second element is how do we do it in such a way that we really can develop these practices, these values, these tools, these technologies, so that if you take any group of well-intentioned people and add one or more other well-intentioned people, that through all of this understanding through all of these tools and practices and techniques that we can prove because we understand collaborology we can prove that the larger group can actually come up with a provably better result either a product or a decision or a course of action or anything you know how do we prove it it's not yet known because you know, we've all seen teams where we put people on the team and the team performance you know goes down so collaborology is an attempt to understand what could we do as teams and as groups of people working together so that through practicing this understanding, we know that we can get better results as we grow with adding more well-intentioned people. And then the last element I'd really like to focus on is if we understand this well enough from experimentation as well as from first principles, can we codify that knowledge? Can we formalize that knowledge in such a way that we can have a mathematics of collaboration? Can we 
get a mathematics of collaborology so that we can then scale our understanding, apply these mathematical models, and really get to some, uh, some scalable results and scalable conclusions. All of this is still conjecture. It's not proven. I've not proven that this can be done. But I'm asking questions of myself, and I'm actually asking questions with my friends to see whether or not this is a reasonable line of exploration. And uh, I've been doing this since about, I don't know, the seminal ideas were in 2005, but I really kind of coined the term and uh, started spreading it with my friends somewhere around 2012, 2013. And there's a small number of, of friends I have uh, that are actually helping me uh, think through this problem, think through this area of study. And uh, to their credit, uh, they've not yet laughed me off the face of the planet yet. So I'm still feeling that there's some valid questions to be, uh, to be pursued here. So that in uh, quick form, maybe two or three minute form, is my introduction to how I'm thinking about collaborology. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to do so, Tim. My pleasure. Uh, so I'm curious as to the protocols, practices, and um, yeah, what, what does that look like on the ground? What are you envisioning? Okay, so today, you know, the protocols are, you know, we get into meetings, we have these time budgets, we have these topic budgets, people take minutes, people take action items, you know, people speak as one by one, when their time is up, you know, things are over, we move on. I think that has been uh, essentially practice now for decades, if not centuries. So what I'm trying to figure out is, have we now, with some of our information tools, the ability for multiple streams of reasoning, multiple streams of acting, deciding, sharing, so that we can actually do this in not a time-constrained fashion. You know, can we do this so that we're actually addressing multiple lines of inquiry in parallel as teams without one person taking over, uh, let's say, the activities of a team and do this in such a way that they uh, synergize. So some examples are, if we're in, in meetings and you know, some of us have seen these on, online meetings, there's a parallel track of text where people can be taking notes. And that's today's, uh, let's say, art of the uh, state of the art, state of the practice. Suppose we have now a way for us to actually start mapping out ideas and connecting ideas in mind map fashion, or in diagrammatic fashion, you know, you could say, well, that's a bit richer than text. And I would myself, you know, uh, claim that it's actually more usable and more structured and therefore it actually has a more rich interaction possibilities. On the other hand, we do have to learn how to use these tools properly. Can we do it in such a way that we can have a conversation and some of us can be modeling this in a diagrammatic tool and yet not be distracted from what's really being discussed in the, in the main delivery uh, of conversation. So it's, it's up to us to design our practices and design our interaction with tools so that we get the most out of these conversations and the most out of these interactions without you know, groups of us being distracted by the tool. So those are still, un, let's say, unrealized uh, intentions. So that's one example. Um, another example is how do we most effectively scale when not a, all of us are working together in real time? You know, obviously, the more people you have, the harder it is to get them all in the same half hour interval. And even if you do, if you get a lot of people, then all of those people only have one over N of that time to even say what it is that they're thinking, right? So most of the time, which is N minus one over N time, could be 99% of the time we're sitting and listening and perhaps we're kind of bursting at the seams with things to say, but yet not given time budget to say those things. Couldn't we apply tools and you know, other media around collaboration so that we can be productive as we're hearing things and constructing you know, follow-up thoughts and having that then fold into the main conversation or the main problem-solving session and have everybody kind of working in parallel, productively, constructively, yet with shared focus. So those are all, you know, questions, you know, and there's, there's hundreds of questions we can ask 
about uh, collaborology and how we scale. Uh, but you know, that's the real-time aspect. The non-real-time aspect is now we're done with a meeting and now other people who may not have been able to attend, you know, they had other activities or they had doctor's appointments, now to come back and pick up the result of what was accomplished in that meeting What's the best way for them to do that? What's the best way for them to hook their thoughts back into what was actually going on? And then a kneel, a layer of new knowledge or new understanding on top of what was produced in the real time uh, of that meeting. So I think all of those are questions that I'm asking myself. Now, these are not unique questions, but I want to scale the, the course of conversation, you know, so that we're really looking at it from problems that have planetary scale as well as aligning an immense number of people who want to do good and want to be aligned and yet do not want to be working at cross purposes. Okay. And so I'm, I'm only giving a hint at some of these questions and hopefully suggesting some conversations that whoever's interested, you know, in these questions can then engage with me and uh, we can then go and work on some uh, repositories that I've been setting up for this and take notes, have conversations, develop some ideas, come up with artifacts, and start experimenting with these collaborative uh, tools, collaboration tools. Great. Um, <clears throat> what what uh, I've been working on fits really beautifully in with that, I think. Um, so for me, this is a way to be able to have real-time generative conversations. I would like to see all meetings be recorded and made available for others to be able to plug in and participate. Um, and it creates, it's a, it's, a, it's a potential solution to what it is that you're suggesting. Uh, and I've been looking for people to consider into that space and deeply consider uh, how it is that we can actually do that. So I couldn't resonate with you more uh, because, yeah, I've mentioned these conversations I've been having with friends since about late 2012. We had these conversations almost every day uh, up until about uh, August of 2016. So it kind of went from seven to six to five to three. But, you know, there are many, many hundreds of these conversations. And those are all recorded. And in fact, probably somewhere around 20 to 50% of them are already up on um, the net shared. Not that everybody wants to listen to all of them, but we want to do it in that degree of transparency and that degree of accountability. Hopefully with the intent that, you know, as our tools progress, uh, eventually it becomes uh, very obvious and brain dead simple for some tool to just mine all of those audio records, come up with understandable transcripts and then allow us to take those transcripts and just you know, use them as you know, back links or forward links or be able to connect ideas together and then use those for blog entries, books, other uh, presentations, uh, media types, uh, you know, perhaps video, perhaps more conversations. Um, so I and my friends strongly believe in this as well, that everybody, when they interact, has some record of that interaction which then can be used as kind of like the ground truth or the starting point for derivative works, right? So yes, I, I share that. In fact, that's a very Engelbartian idea also. You know, Doug, when he was building his tools for collaboration, one of his ideas was anything that's written down is immutable, cannot be deleted, cannot be edited. You can version it, you can, you know, create new works on top of it, but for traceability, for providence, for epistemological reasons, everything remains for the record and nothing is deleted. So I, I think that's a very key idea who are actually trying to develop things together. You know, you don't want a reference to an article or a statement suddenly disappearing, you know, sometime in the future. You know, you don't ever want that and then have a dangling uh, link. So, yes, I think it's, uh, it's an Engelbartian idea that I've been trying to practice and I'm really glad to see that you've been practicing it, uh, an idea like that as well, Tammy. Yeah. Yeah, we have a lot of complementarity with what it is that we think about and what we've been designing and practicing. Uh, and there are some fundamental protocols that I'd like to share within my work that might be useful to you. Great. Um, so the first one is that 
this is in service to the participants. And, uh, and so I'm not uh, practicing an extractive kind of media. I'm not taking your voice and image and going to go and do something with it. I'm investing my time to be able to understand what it is that you're doing and be of service to you to be able to articulate it as well as being present with my own hopes, dreams, and visions to contribute and to truly collaborate in the moment um, so that we can be more than just Sam and Tam. Um, and what that looks like is a different kind of, of uh, experience of media ownership. So to me, we both own this media artifact that's going to be here after the fact. Mm -hmm. And we decide, and that's where our agency is, whether we share it and we consider who it is that we choose to share it with, because there's an ecosystem of communication that can get us a result. And so for me, it's not about broadcast, but rather narrow cast and using our intelligence to consider who needs to hear this and inviting them into a process to be able to uh, witness what it is that we talked about and shared and then inviting them to participate, right? One, of the, one of the things that's been a big challenge in that is that we are in a, a, a very challenging attention economy space. And so this is asking for people to pay their attention towards something that is as yet unproven, seems like a good idea, but is huge and overwhelming. And so those are some of the challenges that I've come into contact with in this work in terms of getting buy-in from people. And so what I'm looking to do and why I'm so grateful to meet with you today is to practice what that looks like. What is it when two minds come together and uh, and endeavor to share their hopes and dreams and to collaborate in the moment towards a common future. Um, so ownership of media, I think that needs to look very different. In particular, as it relates. See, I'm one uh, that is deeply appreciated. Sorry, you glitched a little. Sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, no, we, we just had a little moment of glitch, as happens with this technology sometimes. Yeah, I'm on an island, so at times my connection is not as good as it ought to be, so I apologize for interrupting you. No worries. Uh, just that, uh, I was just finishing up with that uh, user-generated content is something that is the flotsam and jetsam of the attention economy. And what I'm suggesting is that our voice and our image and ourselves, uh, we need to consider how that is in the world, how that's treated in the world and create some frameworks where uh, that content can be given value. So whether that's sponsorship or crowdfunding to be able to, uh, to, be able to compensate people for doing this very important work of development and collaboration. Um, yeah, those are the kind of questions that I have and those are the challenges that I have in bringing this into, into fruition. So I love this because what you're talking about indicates a kind of skill set that I don't have, you know, and this is an area that you've been playing in for a while. Um, just as a matter of reference, about a week or so ago, uh, I was invited to talk about Engelbart in the context of blockchain. And so when you're talking about ownership and you're talking about um, how we point cast, not, not broadcast, but, you know, point cast or narrow cast, as you say, uh, this, it seems like some of the fundamental ideas behind a blockchain-like architecture to information uh, might be useful, you know. And so I was just wondering whether you and or your past projects or, you know, current collaborators might have been uh, 
encroaching into this blocking space and learn that that's a, a space of possibilities. Yes. Yes, definitely. Um, there are three projects that immediately come to mind. Uh, one is uh, Daniel Harris. He's got a project called the Kendra Initiative, and mm. it is to uh, develop a digital rights framework for uh, media assets. I think he's ma he's focused on on uh, music, but it could be uh, it could be spooled out for any type of media asset. Uh, <clears throat> and he's been on that for a few years, so he's uh, he's well on his way. Uh, another another one is um, Arthur Brock. Uh, he I've met Arthur. Okay, yeah. So his what he's doing is more of a semantic tree approach rather than uh, having to authenticate all of the all of the transactions across the network, which obviously takes up quite a bit of um, power. Um, he works with a semantic tree, which is a very elegant way to be able to just notally uh, authenticate its truth, right? Mm -hmm. So he's he's doing something else that's really quite interesting there. Uh, and thirdly, um, there's a person that I met through the Sensorica um, project in Montreal, <clears throat> which is a, a uh, open, open value network that, so it's a, it's a, it's a different kind of, um, uh, uh, it's, it's a non corporate structure. It's a network structure that, uh, that that is set up for for open hardware projects so that people from anywhere in the world can collaborate on creating open hardware uh, to to be able to provide that for communities that need that uh, yes. right mm -hmm. um, so there's a person there Jim Anastasio that has a project called block sense and so he's been doing a deep dive into the blockchain specifically and is um, is consulting to help people to see how the blockchain could serve their their project. That's cool. I think that uh, you know, since my encounter with this group in Palo Alto about a week and a half ago, I've actually seen uh, because I've been thinking with them and by myself about uh, this kind of integration of uh, of trends. You know, the blockchain ideas with some of Doug's ideas and especially with regard to open democracy, how we might bring about uh, some of these collaborative practices or collaborative tools. Yeah. Um, so that's actually quite interesting to me. So if you've got these collaborators who are already working in these spaces, then I'm very excited to, uh, make, uh, to learn from them, basically. Yeah, so for me, what, you know, I, I would like to have a bit more of a sense of a strategic direction before just making introductions and waiting course, into an course. unknown space. Uh, right. And, uh, and I, I feel like you and I have uh, quite a bit more that we should connect on in terms of really understanding, you know, I don't quite, uh, I think I don't know what it is that you're most passionate about in this and uh, one of the things that I'd like to explore a bit further in our conversation today is about the human system side of things that you talked about, because that's where the development needs to be. Uh, we need to be able to take it on board and do it, right? So what are the gaps? What are the challenges that you see? I would like to follow up with what I see because I've been in it too. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you riff there. So this is one of my favorite topics. When it comes to the kind of world or society that I think we'd like to create, there's a sense of accountability as well as the sense of good intent as well as wanting to connect and reinforce. So one of the things that I've been thinking about, and this is again, another experiment, is a set of practices that has really been written down 
in an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. That's the standard size for here in the US. Um, but I say written down only in the sense that it's, it's intended to be concise. And so it's large font, very few words, mostly bullet points. And it's a opt-in kind of self-practice. And it goes like this. There's you know, about, about four or five key ideas. And one is that you explicitly declare that you want to do good in the world. I don't define good. Good is defined by each individual. But at least you want to say, I want to do good. Second is to say, here's how I want to do it. And to share it transparently and explicitly. And to periodically hold oneself accountable for this intent as well as this plan of action towards achieving that intent. And to do it in such a way that it's not just, oh, I did well this week or I did good today. It's to hold oneself accountable with at least two friends or peers, people you love, people who love you, who know you and you know them, and can therefore get behind all of your masquerade and say, you know, basically hold you accountable and look past your BS. And that these lessons can then be shared and then can be tweaked so that you can restate what it is that you think good is, or you restate what it is that you think is your approach to doing good. Now, those in particular software practices might recognize some of these ideas as agile practices. But, you know, Doug Engelbart himself was practicing these 40 years before the, uh, or 30 years at least, before the term agile was applied to these ideas. And it can be said that, you know, this is basically the fundamental of learning, you know, so why not do this? It's just a way to hold oneself accountable to oneself and to peers and to do it within a trusted network of people, one that I'm calling the community of impact. And then if you actually do this, then your notion of what is good will evolve and grow over time. And your strategy about how to achieve that will also grow and slightly change the direction. You may realize that you know, that direction you originally set out on, it was gonna take you someplace unintended, but you really need to course correct. So, by doing this, I want everybody to have a chance to start from a starting point, which is today, and say, you know, here's what I'm gonna do here, so I'm gonna do it, and here are the people that I'm going to be transparent with and accountable to, so that my behavior lines up with my values, and my execution lines up with my intent. So that as I do this periodically and learn and adjust, I'm hopefully truer and truer to where I really wanna go. And that if we actually connect with others that are holding themselves accountable, who are practicing this transparency and this kind of explicitness and really creating projects that manifest how they think good can be done in the world, then we can resonate with each other. Then I can say, Tammy, I really get what you're trying to do and here's what I'm doing can resonate and support what you're doing. And likewise, hopefully invite you and others to support and resonate with what I'm doing. And I think that such a community practicing such, uh, such intent and such practices, and then helping each other make impact in the world is enough of an example that I think that we can then bring about the shift that I think we'd like to see. And so many people say, oh, do we really need a million people? Do we really need a billion people to do this? My hope is that somewhere between 3,000 and 30,000 is sufficient. And to reach those 3,000 or 30,000, I want to virtually uh, carpet bomb the world with these eight and a half by 11 sheets of paper. Obviously, I don't want to kill trees to do this, but I want to be able to reach 8 billion people and hope that somewhere between 3,000 and 30,000 in, let's say, the first year I launched this can see this and say, wow, you know, I'm going to try and conduct myself accordingly. And then I'm going to try and connect with other people who are holding themselves accountable this way. And then I want to make sure that I reinforce them and they reinforce me and that we build this network and it spans the globe and that we hopefully then can make some massive impact. And that is the COI community of impact uh, project that I'm really trying to work on. So the draft right now 
is a working draft. Yeah, you're on mute. Sorry, uh, what's COI? The community of impact. So that refers to this eight and a half by 11 uh, page opt-in one pager that codifies exactly what I just described verbally. And I and friends are still working on some of the wording and some of the expression of it. But it is already available in a, uh, in a form that can be reviewed. So I believe I pointed the collaborology.info at that draft. So, you know, I'll go and confirm that later on. But uh, those who are listening to this, if indeed I recollect re properly, then go to collaborology.info and you'll be able to see this draft of this one page that I'm talking about. So that to me is one of the key projects that I'm working on right now. Number one, because I don't have the, the actual funding yet to build some of the tools that are actually going to take more investment. But this is a project that I think can be launched fairly quickly and fairly um, inexpensively. And that's why I'm thinking this through in thought experiment form and actually trying to practice it with some friends of mine. Cool. Um, so I am, I guess part of me wants to challenge you on the starting at 3000, um, maybe start with three. Yes, absolutely. Six. I'm saying I want to reach 3000 and 30,000, but yes, absolutely. I want to start with one and then two others bringing the three. And I've actually been, uh, doing this a little bit already with, uh, let me just mention, um, Dino Karabeg in Oslo and uh, uh, David Price in London, and um, Alexander Laszlo in Buenos Aires, and uh, Frode Hegelin also in London. So this is the small community that has been helping me evolve these ideas and sort of begin practicing these. Wonderful. Yes, uh, it's, I really appreciate that you have been working on it with others, and not for just a minute. Um, that really, it really helps us to be able to, uh, to understand where the, where the challenges lie and how, uh, yeah, what is that, that strategy of actuation, right? That's where I'm at right now mm -hmm. is, uh, so I'm, I'm in a, in a alternative business school called grounds, groundswell and, um, for unlikely entrepreneurs, people who want to see change in the world. Um, and it's not necessarily that it has to be a, a corporate incorporated body. It could just be a project. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, how do we actually make it happen? So, you know, I think that it's good for us to both think through what our minimum viable product might be, right? Or process. Yeah. I mean, just as you're being receptive to what I'm trying to create, I'd love to find out what it is that you're doing and the kind of lessons you're learning in that program and how I might support that and how we might be able to complement and resonate with each other. So tomorrow I'm doing a presentation on my idea, which has been a real challenge for me because essentially I have had an internal experience of seeing how the world can be different and I'm trying to translate that experience into actions that we can take in the world and projects that make sense for people. Uh, so similar to you, I put my finger on, on collaboration as, as a critical way to be able to make that happen in recognition that none of us could do this alone. And the whole point is that we do it together. That's, I think, the great learning that we're in as a species is how do we uh, how do we break away from the competitive model, the each for their own, into a weaving of all of us in service to the new systems, both in, our, you know, in business, in how the world works, in how decisions are made. How do we, how do we bridge from the, the broken places that we are now and the, the systems that are that are harming us to a just generative world. And I have seen and felt and heard from thousands of people one-on-one uh, -on -one about their ideas. And 
there's a lot of similarity. It's like we're all listening to the same uh, music and expressing it in different modalities. We're painting it. We're exploring it with others. We're, you know, we're, we're looking for those ways where we can bring what we believe is possible into the world. Uh, and so I see a power in both lifting up the voices of people that are doing that, helping them to articulate it clearly so that other people can understand, offering connections to people that may be useful, and documenting that entire process so that we can progress together and have that, that piece that you talked about around it being transparent and people being accountable. Because if I say on the record that I'm going to introduce you to someone and then I don't, there's, there's a problem there. And you can point to that and say, Tamers, you said you'd do that, but you didn't. Or uh, we can see really what's going on and where it breaks down. Yes. Not, only, not only from a place of being accountable, but also... Where does communication break down? Where is one thing said and another heard? And so that we can kind of put our finger on those challenges very specifically and yeah. allow each other to see what we might need yeah. to be able to be met in a different way. Yeah. When I say accountability, I think you're getting at this, uh, this point that I think I want to express. And that is, it's not intended to be punitive, right? It's intended to be constructive. Yes. And to be able to give us some ground truth that we can then use as our, our memory, you know, the corpus of shared knowledge. Yes. You know, so that we know what is a fact and what is an alternative fact, you know? Hopefully we're working. Oh, Kellyanne Conway. <laughs> oh. Right? I mean, if we had systems like this, um, and by the way, a small 15 second aside, I was working on uh, one of the proposals with Froda Heglin for the Knight Foundation, uh, we had this concept called the time browser, where we could take recorded media like the one you're creating, as well as any audio record or written record or even just verbal accounts. And let's say, you know, 30 people attended the same event. How could you take all 30, let's say, recording devices or video cameras or even cell phones or, you know, audio recordings and stitch them together to come up with something that is more high fidelity than they all had individually? And use that as a way to sort of say, okay, so here's some knowledge or at least some uh, recording of an event that we can all use to go back to and then create derivative works from, you know? So that time browser notion is something that is, is ingrained in this notion that what we do is on the record and what we do should be a foundation for other works and there should be some sort of basis for fact and truth, you know, as close to it as we can commonly agree. So, yes, I mean, uh, these ideas, I think, are, they, they span the, the scale of complexity all the way from just, you know, what happened all the way up to interpretations of it, to derivative works, to opinion, to knowledge, to interpretation, to wisdom, you know. And again, you know, unless you've got them interrelated and you sort of see the provenance and the connections and the courses of thought that connect them all, anybody can say anything. And then it's hard to have discourse when somebody just says X, Y, Z is true, and there's no connection to whether or not, you know, it's based on fact or imagination or some bad dream with some bad drugs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. So the project that I'm presenting tomorrow, I'm calling Each One Help One. And the idea is this would be a segment of each one help one. Wow. So I'm looking at you. I'm inspired by what it is that you're talking about. I want to give you space to be able to articulate your dream and your vision and see how I can help. So this would be, I haven't quite figured out how to get paid for any of this work. And this is part of the challenge is in finding ways to be able to give value to this kind of work. I resemble that remark, by the way, Tammy. <laughs> yes, many, many, many of us do. Um, and whether we're 
working alone on ideas that we want to bring to fruition or whether we're volunteering in our community, mm -hmm. there's a lot of unpaid work going on. And, and yet imagine this, I mean, imagine, the, you know, let's say, you know, we fast forward to this time T plus, you know, some Delta T and we're living in this new world, right? Is there a notion of having to be paid for a good idea? Is there a notion of having to be paid to do, you know, this community building or these, generative kind of dialogues you know i think the whole notion of being paid for a job or how you spend your time is one we do need to rethink you know and we have to sort of get our ability to live our ability to survive freed up from that which someone is going to measure us on as productive you know agreed yeah So part of what I'm doing is wanting to have these conversations so that we can do these deep dives into these important questions that we have. Uh, where my interest lies is in, uh, in presenting ideas that can shift the way the economy works, because that's in my deep dive into what the heck's going on around here. Okay. That's hmm. where I see the greatest need for change and the most uh, effective way to make change happen in the real world. Okay, let me bring one other idea then to the forefront. And uh, this is one of the things that I've been developing in this whole domain called collaborology. And that is when people meet, it's you know, usually some sort of a casual uh, thing, unless it's a very formal meeting. You, know, you sort of meet people in all kinds of different circumstances, but eventually curiosity drives one or the other to say, oh, let me understand what you do. And oh, by the way, here's my business card. Right? Now, after that exchange of business cards, then there's some very undefined process, which you know, may be clear to some people, but not very clear to me. You know, whether or not you have follow-ups, whether or not you have a lunch meeting, whether or not you share coffee, whether or not you have dinner, all this sort of thing. But eventually, if these conversations lead to something, then there's an eventual contract of some kind, either a joint venture or an employment contract or you know, some other kind of agreement that says, we're gonna do the following thing together. This segment of time from the exchange of business card to the signing of a contract, to me is this process that I'm wondering, could it be clarified? Could it be made more transparent? And could we accelerate that process so that we more quickly decide whether we can do something or whether we cannot do something together, okay? So I and my friends have uh, created this thing called the CCC. Uh, it's basically a unilateral MOU, unilateral memo of understanding or a letter of intent. That basically, again, transparency makes transparent and makes explicit. You know, these two themes are quite uh, uh, evident in my discourse here. And so it's an attempt to say, I, when I talk to you, I see you wanting to do this, and I want to do something that could support that and here's what I'm proposing. Here's how I would like to work. Let me suggest that we do the following one, two, or three things together. And oh, by the way, I prefer to work with this tool, this tool, this tool, this tool. And that's my semi-proposal. It's non-binding. It's unilateral. It's from me to you. But it invites a response. It invites a similar CCC. The CCC, by the way, is a communication and commitment to collaborate. Okay, so basically it just has this five you know, sections that says, here's what you're doing, here's what I'm doing, here's what I think we could do together, here's how I want to do it, and here's the things that you can help me with or I can help you with, okay? So just very quickly, it's a statement that says, maybe we can shrink the time from the exchange of a business card to the signing of a contract, and we can actually get that to be shorter so that, you know, if, if we want to, we can speed up our interaction, and if we scale it, we speed up the economy, by more quickly coming to an understanding of can we collaborate or not. So that's an experiment that I've actually uh, run a few dozen times. I've written CCCs to people and had them actually uh, respond in like kind with their own CCCs. So uh, we're starting to explore how this might actually work. And when you first look at it, it kind of looks a little bit more like you know, a credit application. It's not intended to be that complicated. It's intended just to be very simple, you know, only five basic sections. And I'm still trying to make it look less uh, and imposing than it actually looks right now. But anyway, that's one of the ideas that I'm experimenting with that's coming out of this collaborology thinking. I just wanted to introduce that as well. Fantastic. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, um, those, those agreements are really important and it's part of that 
process flow. Um, and as far as, yeah, I mean, those, you're putting your finger on some of the, some of the p challenges, right? It's like, uh, I guess one of the things that I've been thinking is that we have, you know, we're in this place where the persons under the law, the corporations have all the power, they're writing legislation. Um, we have a tightening noose around the neck of humanity with president business at the helm. Um, and I'm not even sure he's that good at business. You know, he's got well, this obviously not. He will, you know, let's not sidetrack into right. that world. Um, but, uh, and everyone's got an opinion on that. And I think that we give that way too much time and mental space. And in the economy of attention, he is winning because of how he's so ridiculous. So what we need to do is to be engaging as well. We need to, what are we doing and how are we doing that in a way that can actually engage people? So mm -hmm. it needs to be fun. It needs to be um, real, right? We need to speak directly to the challenges that people are having so that they can see how they fit in and how that makes sense for them to be able to participate, whether they're just watching something or whether they're participating. Uh, so, yeah, we, I think that you and I have a, a ton of intersectionality. In fact, we're, we're talking about much the same things. And, uh, you know, I started developing these ideas in 2000. So I've got 17 years in of development, ideation, testing, kicking the tires, and, <clears throat> and experience with where the barriers are for people, right? As well as as a, a sense of what the critical path is to being able to enact this change. Now, I'm just a high school dropout that just jumps into things and does them because I believe that we need to learn how to do something entirely different than what we've been doing. And so I've devoted my time and my energy and my heart and commitment to, to growing this without a support system to support me in doing this. And so that makes it very real for me to find ways to collaborate. That doesn't mean that I'm investing months of my life for, no, for, for likely a breakdown in communication or mm -hmm. commitment. Yeah. Because that's part of what happens. And that's happened so many times in my experience of collaboration that um, I definitely recognize it as a barrier. So where I'm looking to intervene is in finding ways to have that collaboration supported, right? Whether it's through a sponsorship model, a crowdfunding model, um, you know, there's a fee for service model, I suppose, but I don't see that as, uh, as I find it hard to sell because it depends on how the collaborators show up. Right. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm deeply challenged in finding out how to enter into this space and be supported in it. Um, and I'll be real. I need it. I need to be supported in doing this work. So, I'm demonstrating, I'm looking to demonstrate the value of holding space for people to be able to share and coming in as a participant with them to be able to kick their t the tires on the idea, make any connections that might be useful to make and continue to progress the ideas in an attempt to show that value so that it can be seen and supported by others. Because I do believe that this is what we need to do. I would like to explore how that can that can work, you know. And uh, I clearly would like to support you. I want to find ways to do that. Uh, I think that what you're doing and holding space and allowing me to express what it is is very much appreciated um, because you come at it with a perspective that very few others do, and not just with a perspective, but with a curiosity and an investment of time that 
isn't always there. So I do want to value that and I want to find out how it is that we can be supporting each other. I can support you as you are supporting me. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something that uh, I'll give some thought and uh, time to create. Likewise, you know, if I'm thinking in collaborology terms, uh, you have a tremendous amount of knowledge and lessons learned from these 17 years of pursuing this particular think space. And so I'm thinking, how is it that if you're willing, how is it most effective that I learn from what you've been, you've yourself been learning uh, without wasting your time? Or how could we then apply that to some of the things that I'm working on so that we can complement each other, you know, so that some of what I'm doing and what I've learned can be helping you. And perhaps, you know, since, uh, at least for part of my career, a big part of my career, I've been in the you know, tool building space as well. And maybe there's ways that uh, I could help you there, as well as you helping me develop some of the ideas on the human system side. So all of those are possibilities that come about when we have these conversations. Yes. And I'm sure that uh, you had that possibility in mind as I was hoping that uh, we would have these possibilities come out of such a conversation. So what would feel really good for me is if you would be willing to schedule one of these where we flip roles. Yes, absolutely. I would yeah. definitely want to do that. There's so much that I can learn from you because of what you've been doing and who you've been talking to as well. Yes. And uh, for me, it's, it's, I'm excited about people like you that are already in the space already have tons of connections and thought and things that you're, you're doing, that you're moving forward, that want to use this process to advance your work. You know, for me, this process is, is one of the things that I've been co-designing with people like yourself to be in service to uh, articulating and sharing these ideas. Um, so Let's do it, Tammy. Let's get to it. If you were to... If you were to do one with me, yes. And then beyond that, if you were to find ways to use this process, that And refer others to you, right? Uh, sure. But for you to use this process of, you know, you're calling a meeting, it's recorded. You're, because that is the work that you've discussed, right? So you could use this exact process to further your work and to demonstrate what that looks like that would be most exciting. Let's do that. So in immediate response, would you like to set up a time to do the, uh, the second call? Absolutely. And we'll do that in our checkout. Okay. Uh, so, so in That's terms of, I, in terms of wrapping up, Oh, you had another part. Yeah. Go for it. No, 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 no. I was actually going to express my appreciation for giving the opportunity. I mean, we've touched on two of the ideas or two or three of our ideas. I know that we could go on uh, quite a bit. And in fact, there's a whole uh, mind map of ideas that I'd like to eventually navigate through. But as an introduction, as a one hour first session, I think this is awesome. I really appreciate the opportunity to do this. I appreciate your curiosity, your time, your uh, openness, your uh, intent to resonate with all of this. So um, it's, it's, it's what I would like to see us scale. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking this time and for being in this space and sharing your dreams and visions and, and being open to hearing where uh, my work intersects with yours. And I, yeah. I am. Thank you, Tammy. All right. Until next time. <laughs>